but he makes it work and they rotate around very, very smartly. Yeah, it sort of brings to mind the likes of Faker, of course, a fantastic Lulu player in his own right. And I'm not saying that Jauhu anything like Faker, but still, it's brilliant to see him utilizing that champion to such high effect. And Rek'Sai is going to be banned straight away, and I think that's really intelligent. MLXG was brilliant in the jungle. And just coming back to defensive champions, now Lulu sends some success. Morgana yeah. mid was a big success. Morgana mid and then Lulu earlier today for QG. Defensive mid lane is seeing a resurgence this weekend. Yeah, Doinby actually playing that mid Morgana quite effectively as well in the victories that QG managed to pick up. And look, Gragas is going to hit the bench here. Of course, MLXG played the Gragas two games in a row, now having his champion pool really stripped down. And we saw, we were mentioning before, no jungle focus whatsoever when it comes to the pick and ban phase. But Look, now it's all about the jungle, and Vladimir going to be removed. Godby not going to be playing that one. That's an interesting ban. More of a throwaway, do you think, Papa Smithy? It does feel like a bit of a throwaway. My guess this game is they're going to give up Azir and try and have Godby go full Kassadin. We know he can do it. He's the one that caused the resurgence in Kassadin play with his Rod of Ages into Zonya's, into Athene's Unholy Glory. Unholy Grail? Unholy Grail. Close. Build I liked it. That he really piloted for that 40% CDR hopping around a late game team fight build. I think that's what they want to do is engineer that matchup. Cassiopeia is banned, so the only real enticing option against the against the Azir is that Cassidy. So the first pick now makes a lot of sense. Flames back in the lineup. I want to see him adjust that item, but we mentioned it before. Yeah. Go full team fight or go full damage. Do not go for the Sunfire K, because if they choose Hecarim, there's just no options against Hecarim when you have the Sunfire. And yeah, MLXG. If he picks up this Nunu, does let me need to lock in the Azir here for um, Jahu? Because I just feel like Nunu Azir is just such a fantastic combination of champions. I completely agree with this issue too. It's just, do you expect Godfi to play the Azir? We don't see a lot of Azir no, coming through true, from Godfi in general. So perhaps you just chance the fact that he will not lock it through. But you're right. Now you suddenly have multiple people that you can give this blood boil to. Whatever AD carry you choose and the Azir, like you mentioned. Prime targets for Blood Boil. Yeah, Godby as well has the option to go for the LeBlanc. Of course, Jiaohu, a fantastic LeBlanc player in his own right. So the, you know, mid pool, I mean, does have Vladimir and Cassiopeia removed, but they're not exactly the standard bands here for the mid lane. Janna, considered here for Fan, has played it once before to varied success. And Imp, he's hopping on the Jinx. Imp's Jinx was something they hid for the whole season, then played with such panache against oh, Death yeah. in that final. Clearly capable of Jinx by Instalock as Zia comes through. Surprise, surprise. As we, were kind of, as we were both speculating, they're going to leave their AD carry choice for last. Suddenly you go, hmm, is it going to be Vayne time? They oh, might be considering oh, oh. a champion like that. If there's anyone who's going to do it, it's Woosh. It'd be pretty daring to take it into uh, Imp's. Jinx, but I guess anything is possible in that particular regard. Maokai for a bit of more early game power. I think it's going to be the Kassadin. I think he's just going to go Kassadin here and go for the carry that he's done so many times. If you take it to the late game, Kassadin will get all the work done. Sure, they don't have huge uh, wave clear, but Jinx does her fair share of wave clear with AoE crits yep. in the late game. Now I can get into Mega Nar form and do some work as well. It's going to be LeBlanc or Kassadin to me. Or maybe it's time for Fizz. Oh, Godby actually deciding to take the Fizz here. And we did see a lot of Fizz. Of course, Westor there from AHQ over at MSI was a brilliant Fizz play, really putting Fizz back into the champion rotation. But look, it's interesting. Godby didn't quite find success on it the last time he tried, but we'll see whether they can do it this time. You were saying that he has to get back on an Assassin, and this is one way to do it. There was no apology, plenty of apologies to Godby in that particular game. He played very well in lane. He did, yeah. They weren't able to get a victory out of the situation. Jahu actually played this Azir versus, uh, played Fizz into Azir against Dade's Azir and smashed Azir. It's a good matchup for Fizz, especially now that AP Fizz is the invoke choice. They're looking for damage on their AD carry. It felt like it might be Vayne. This is Woosh, <laughs> of course. We shouldn't be surprised. And Vayne's locked in. Yeah, we've seen the first success for Vayne today as well. We'll see whether RNG can sort of carry that momentum as far as whether or not the champion can actually carry momentum itself. But Vayne seeing success. Woosh, if anyone's going to do it, it's this guy. He loves picking this champion. And it's a really good team comp for 
vein here. It's very reminiscent of the comps that Edward Gaming were running at MSI. We would slub in, sub in Callista yeah. for Vayne. That's basically what they were running. So much space control between the Emperor's Divide and, of course, Nunu's CC. And we're forgetting Thresh also has the ability to throw down the box. Maokai peeling. Lots of space for Vayne to do damage. Okay, she doesn't provide AoE damage like the Ren set build that Callista can provide. But still, hyper carry in the back line. Plenty of peel. Yeah, it's most definitely true. And you can see TBQ back on the Lee Sin here. We've seen Lee Sin be a little bit more successful, but I mean, that's talking about this Cinder Hulk patch and seeing him be a little bit more successful than he was when people were trying him out earlier on. Imp on the Jinx here into the vein. A fantastic matchup for Imp here on paper, but we'll see whether Woosh can dodge around that matchup, whether he can get some work done elsewhere as Lamb back on the Thresher's fan. He's going to try and get some work done here on this Janna. Really needs to start trying to prove himself, does the LGD sub support. And Condi made me a believer when it comes to Lee Sin. Played a good, even Cinder Hulk Lee Sin game earlier today. You can say yeah. Lee Sin has the reveal on Vayne, so that might be relevant in team fights, getting her de stealth with the Tempest Cripple. But Lee Sin games they either go really spectacularly well, you snowball a couple of lanes, or you get outscaled. Yeah, and then nothing happens after that 30 minute mark. But look, as you mentioned, Condi did find some success on it. and. We'll see whether it is going to be the Warrior Enchant or whether it's going to be the Cinderhog. But if we want to find out, we have to get onto the Rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Death Sentence not landing as soon as we enter the Rift here for LGD taking on RNG. Game two for our third match of the evening. Let me just, standing around checking out this ward as he dodges nimbly out of the way of a sonic wave, and RNG looking to try and get some deep vision down. Of course, everyone wanting to try and find out who's going to be lane swapping where. Well, let's be real. Vayne really wants to know who's lane swapping where, because they've got a Maokai excellent in a 1v2, and they've got a Vayne that really doesn't want to lane against Jinx. Even though it's Jinx Janus, it's not a high-pressure support, he'd probably prefer to dodge this lane and show up with a Blade of the Ruin King and say, yep, kind of come J Jinx hunting season. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. You just really want to try and you know, dodge out of the first 15 minutes of this game. Sort of no rush 15, please, is what you're going to be riding into all chat. And maybe what they do is because no one lane swaps to the mid lane. Maybe you put Thresh and Vayne into the mid and say, yeah, I bet you weren't expecting that. The Royal Club pre-season three world special Twitch <laughs> Annie mid every game. <laughs> Beautiful. There's worse scenarios, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I, I've, we've seen it done before. I actually potentially... Uh, Love having a Blitzcrank there in the mid lane as well. You can steal away all the blue buffs over each side. No problem at all. Let me and MLXG, though. They're going to start the jungle. Followers Vayne is actually in the top side. So LGD didn't actually try and answer any sort of lane swap that came through there at all. No, they're just accepting their fate in this particular regard. It continues the trend of every single game Flame plays, not getting to play Kennen and getting lane swapped on. It's 100% <laughs> true in every situation, oh it feels my like. Oh, goodness. Never gets a chance, and we get once again to notice that it's pretty sweet Chroma. Yeah, it is a very sweet Chroma. As Godvi's actually taking a billion auto attacks here from Jahu's. Back on a Sharima champion. Very comfortable, and we'll see whether he's... Got a little bit more practice on this Azir, and already got to be at half health, of course. Going to be chugging down that flask as best as best he can, as TBQ is going to be taking down the blue buff on the opposite side of the map. And LGD, what they've managed to engineer in this pick ban phase, good matchup in the mid. As you can see, not so good at the start of the level. That's why you see the, the flask and the potions coming through. So much poke going to come onto the melee champion that is the Fizz, but a lot of kill pressure level 6 onwards, and their most reliable way to win a game, they've tried to play the rotational AoE-focused Wombo team fights. That certainly didn't work the last game. No. Split pushing with a great 1v1 player like Godvi seems like a more reliable way for them to win. Almost engineered that situation game one. They played the Fizz, the game one earlier this week. They played the Fizz. He was getting kills in lane against the Morgana. They rotated him. And then they lost Baron, and in general, the other lanes were losing. So that was a situation where that split push with Fizz, no teleports, yeah. wasn't going to work. If you avoid those situations, go even in other lanes, keep the vision strong around the big structures, like the big neutrals like Baron and Dragon, just give Gobby that chance to carry. Because so far, the other three strategies you've thrown out as a team haven't worked. Yeah, and is it going to be TBQ picking up this Lee Sin in the jungle that's really going to help facilitate Godby making moves here in the mid lane? Is it 
going to be the fact that they're going to have that earlier power spike from the jungle, make sure that that is going to be in their control. I think that's a really good way of surmising what they're going to do. They needed to have an early power spike jungler. Otherwise, you can see, if you leave things to their own devices, first six levels in mid are yeah. awful for the Fizz. He goes up for an auto attack, gets, what, three, four Sand Soldier autos coming through. You've seen that happen. From Jahu, gets chunked out. He's going to really eat through these potions quickly. If, if if the Lee Sin can get into mid, blow a flash, suddenly free kill level 6 onwards is going to be the case coming through. Barring some shenanigans with the Emperor's Divider, always possible. Yeah. And then rotating into long lane. So the faster that you can clear some waves, the faster that you can push down some turrets, getting Fizz into a long lane is wonderful because he's so hard to track down. As an AP build, you're going to be maxing playful tricks to first. Yep. So you have a lot of maneuverability. In a long lane, you've got nowhere to back away, from, back away to. So of course... The assassination potential is very good for the Fizz on whoever they send. This is, I think, the strategy that we're going to see. And if we do eventually see, say, Fizz pushing against Maokai, that's one, another counter matchup for the Fizz. We saw Zatai last season rocking the Fizz versus Maokai matchup. So whoever they send to deal with the Fizz, if Fizz is snowballed, they just don't really have any good options to RNG. No. I mean, we can talk about Godby this whole time, but I mean, Imp as well is going to be sitting on this Jinx. So if you want late game insurance after picking this sort of mid game focused duo in the mid lane, then Jinx probably one of your best options. We saw Woosh playing it to fantastic effect and Imp now with a free lane on the Jinx, we're going to have an accelerated possible hyper carry in this game. And Jinx synergizes really well with an assassin like Fizz because Fizz, look, he's either going to burst people down or he's going to get a lot of damage onto people. And then suddenly the Super Mega Death Rocket will be likely to pick up that first passive activation and get excited on the Jinx. Suddenly you have mobility riding through on that comp. So any sort yeah. of deletion damage, it's missing health damage with an assassin that's good at 100 to zero. So there's a lot of synergy between the two. If Jinx enters a fight excited, it's just that much more likely that the second, third activation of that passive will come through and she'll be able to skirt the outsides of a fight to complement the down and dirty work that she's expecting Fizz and Nar to do. Yeah, and we'll see whether, you know, the sub support making his way in here, Fan trying to get some work done, but he does have the Monsoon in his arsenal here at the same time, so can sort of do some disengage work, really try and keep Imp safe on this Jinx. He's going to be doing the most work that he possibly can this game. Of course, the pause almost running out, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be back into this game ASAP, and I'm excited to see whether LGD can get their first win on the board. It's a little bit exp a little bit less expectation when you get your support onto Janna. She really only has one job of disruption, whether it's restarting a team fight or just peeling for the Jinx. It's a little bit more straightforward. He tried to play some of those engaged supports and got manhandled a little bit in lane especially. So just play the Janna, play a bit more passively. Given the vertical lane that was enacted when the red side team went top lane with their dual wave, it gives a lot of dragon control to blue side and LGD. At least they'll get one dragon early in this game. Yeah, three and a half minutes. They are going to pick that one up, of course, with solo vision of that. RNG are going to be yelled at by the dragon as it does fall over, though. So they are going to have a relative timer as to when that one is going to be coming back up again. As another paw is going to be coming through. And whoosh. Still here on the top side of the map, but RNG most definitely ready to protect him if he is going to get into any trouble. He spent a little bit more time in lane, so actually has a 10 CS advantage with the freeze that he's created. Jinx had to leave lane a little bit to help with the dragon, so a little yeah. bit sad times, but she'll find the CS, don't worry. I have a feeling Imps will find his way back into this lane, of course. He does tend to do it over and over again. A fantastic player, and we talk about both of these Samsung um, AD carries to come over at the from... 2014, Deft has been getting a whole lot of limelight, but Imp, also a brilliant player in his own right, and of course the finals here in the LPL for the Spring Split were explosive based on that AD carry matchup. I believe Imp started last season really, really well. If I was asked to rank AD carries after three weeks of the LPL Spring, I would have had Imp at number one, and this is from someone who, personally, I just have never really rated Imp in the top three of AD carries, but he was I was really impressed with his performance at the start of the LPL Spring. And he ended the split really, really well. Played he excellently did. in playoffs. He had those three losses in a row as Callista. Okay, doesn't seem to be working. Forces the uh, forces PYL to stay in his lane and then suddenly went from 0-3 Callista to 7-4 and four Callista. 7-1 run was after those 0-3 and yeah. losses. So was really impressed in that champion to the point where it was permanently banned in the finals by EDG. Impact. 
maybe had those shaky times in the middle of the season, but was very, very impressive. Definitely top 380 carry in the spring. Def gets the plaudits because A, his team won and then went on to win, <laughs> win MSI. So I think he deserves the attention that he gets. But Imps oh, a yeah. world champion. Imps won a lot of things in his career. And he's just now, well, he, was, he was one game away from winning the LPL spring and thus getting to represent China at MSI. Yeah, and that game itself was incredibly close at the same time. It was on a knife edge. Of course, Def did manage to pick up a pentakill to pick up the victory. But still, I mean, if that have, had have gone the other way, of course, Jinx pretty capable of pentakills herself. But of course, look, didn't manage to happen just there. We'll see whether LGD can find some form, find their way back into a similar situation come the end of this split. But RNG at the moment definitely doing a decent job deterring LG LGD from making it there. And so far, sort of the newcomers meshing together has looked quite effective. And Jahu's just so, imp he's so impressive to me in the mid lane. Zhao is a really smart player. He got outplayed by Dai. That was the surprise. That is in the mechanical sense, yeah. he was outplayed by Vladimir in that Vladimir versus LeBlanc matchup. In game one, his Lulu was very impressive. He was pressuring out Godvi on one of his premier champions. Although it's a good matchup for Lulu, it's not usually as good as Zhao was able to demonstrate in game one. Yeah. So much credit needs to go to him. Now he's on his comfort champion. He's played so much Azir. He's really good at Azir to the point where he's one of the few players that before this Azir Cassiopeia meta came in where both champions either need to be banned or first picked. Azir was always permanently banned against Shadow yeah. because he's so powerful on this champion. And they've engineered the prototypical protect the AD carry comp. Woosh is on a champion he's got a lot of practice on. I would have preferred Callista, Callist but of course Callista was banned during the picks and bans. It doesn't True. quite have the AoE of Callista. But if you're not going to go Cogmore, Vayne is a ve definitely a fine replacement in what is a very strong comp that has seen teams like EDG success multiple times. Yeah, and I was thinking about what they were going to do as far as having to pick a hyper carry that can scale alongside the likes of the Nunu here as well, considering the fact that they do have the Azir. Fantastic synergy there, but the Vayne, interesting hyper carry choice just because you don't necessarily have the range, but whoosh. More than happy to play that champion. He played it so many times in situations that we questioned him for. I believe he played it once in the regular season and then five times in a row <laughs> yeah. against Snake. That was the surprise where it was like, why is he still Loki in the vein? That was before Vayne started seeing a bit more play. And in general, it's been, what, second or third most played AD carry this weekend. Siva, obviously, right yeah. up the top, almost 100% pick and ban. Vayne's top three, which is a surprise. She has a decent landing matchup against Sivir, but there's so many other factors. You know, people talk about, you could say Vayne beats Sivir, and when you get Blade of the Ruin King, absolutely it's a great matchup for Vayne, but it's just that Sivir has options, right? Sivir can yeah. push, Sivir can freeze, Sivir has burst damage, Sivir's better at taking turrets. There's a, there's a part in every laning phase where Vayne has kill pressure on Sivir, but both teams know that, and both teams know how to play around that. And the Sivir side is so much easier and straightforward because she has more strings in her bow to, I do a million damage late in the game to one target. So that's why yeah. Sivir's always favored in that matchup. Now we're ending up with the Jinx versus Vayne matchup, although not really because lane swaps are going to negate that. And still, if you try and 1v1 this matchup, it's super hard for Vayne. You have to be on point because you cannot eat the Zap. You cannot eat the Super Mega Death Rocket with your very brittle... Uh, base stats, you need to be on board with Flash, and it needs to be obviously no supports around with Pink Ward. So execution heavy, perhaps to a fault for Woosh. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for Woosh, but of course, loves to pick it up, loves to play it as much as he possibly can. But it's funny, the fact that, you know, you pick a vein and you want the 1v1 towards the mid game, but if you get a 1v1 situation against another one of these longer range AD carries in the early stages, things are not going to look so great for you whatsoever. But at the moment, Woosh... Sitting up there, frozen lane, just picking up all of the farm that he wants. Is it going to be enough? Because are they going to be able to find a situation where Woosh can get these sort of single target focused fights around this game? I guess I don't know the answer to that question. Obviously, it will develop as the match comes yeah. through. I think it'll be difficult. The thing about Vayner, she's a really poor Siege as well to pile on to all the other things we we're mentioning when comparing her to champion like Siva and Jinx to some degree. Of course, Jinx has the really long range in the rocket form to be very relevant in a sieging situation. So you might think, okay, have Vayne split push. And that's why the purple build came through. It was always yeah. about the Blade of the Ruin King into the Yomu's Ghost Blade. It's not going to work in this situation because who are they going to send against Jinx? against the Vayne but Fizz, who has so many options to get the kill with her brittle low stats. Now that Fizz has been changed, you kind of have to hit the fish, so maybe there's a small amount of counterplay in trying to dodge that that fish, but 
you're going to take God V in a 1v1 side wave matchup for the yeah. vein. So now you're going to have that awkward situation where they're going to try and siege, but they have two melee champions, fairly short range Thresh, Azir who's going to be more focused on setting up Sand Soldiers if there's ever an engage, and Vayne who really can't siege. So the strategic options for RNG, they're difficult. But they were difficult in game one and they pulled them off. Can they pull it off in game two as the camera stays longingly <laughs> onto flame? I'm sorry. That was just hilarious. It distracted me a whole lot. I barely heard what you were just saying. Eyes on is, the prize, Atlas. Yeah, Flame just licking his lips there on the screen. Now having a giggle, I think, has been informed at, that he was on the big screen in the studio there. A new animated GIF has been formed. I really, really hope so. I'm going to need to have someone send me that because it is absolutely fantastic. That is the guy that has managed to take the photo of it on his phone, the video, so he can turn it into a GIF. Thank you very much. A man's a hero. The pause keeps coming out. Of course, there hasn't been much of this game to comment on. The thing is, I, I called Vayne, and that wasn't, I, I wasn't even thinking about Woosh. It was just, you look down, Callista's not available. You need a hyper carry to really yep. um, justify this lineup, especially once Azir is picked. Azir works so well with a hyper carry because then you have to come on to Azir, who has all his Sand Soldiers set up for that situation, has the yep. Emperor's Divide to push you away, and the hyper carry has so much space to carry in the back. That's why the, the Callista comp in this particular situation in ED, for EDG looks so great. I guess kind of the, the issue will be sieging will be difficult. The comp is strong, but I actually commend the Lee Sin pick because maybe they predicted the fact that it was going to be Vayne because Lee Sin does yeah, ruin Vayne's day to some degree, whether it's kicking her out of position, which will be diff more difficult to do when you can't get over that Emperor's Divide. So maybe the Emperor's Divide will have to be used proactively rather than as reactively as might be optimal for the Azir. But... The interaction between the Lee Sin and both these carries, whether it's Azir or Vayne, will be very interesting. Now, I want to actually see the Azir wall, the Emperor's Divide, used as a game of Pong. You know, someone hits a sonic wave and then, of course, tries to resonating strike his way in, but no, gets denied with a massive Azir wall. I think it'd be absolutely hilarious. Whoosh has shoved this wave up quite aggressively, now able to get a little bit of damage down onto this turret as TBQ might be in trouble. Steals away the puppy. Does MLXG and heads on back. No problem there at all. Oh, actually, Godby going for the all-in here. Has activated the W, doing a lot of extra auto-attack damage, but Jahu does manage to create some distance. Still has the barrier available, but not a whole lot of mana. Yeah, the trade, this trade still, it looked like it was going to be in Godby's advantage, but the... The damage on the backside is just massive coming through from Zhao, who you're always guaranteed to take three, four of those auto attacks on the backside of each trade. And until MXG, or sorry, until TBQ can start impacting this mid lane, it's just sad times for Fitz. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for Godby, who's got no more potions left, no more flask stacks either. But Zhao, who a little bit low on the old mana himself, so not too many attack commands for these sand soldiers to come through. But Godby does eat another one. Gets slowed down just a little bit, Jahu now with a considerable CS advantage, although not anything to really ride home about at this stage, as Woosh now has yet another freeze on this top side of the map. Yeah, now and Jana had managed to push it up most of the way, but the deep freeze is back on. Imp seems less worried about that, but as the wave pushes back, he has the option to freeze in bottom. I'll just continue the push. Yeah, Flame and Fan with a pseudo 2v2 lane here with the Nah and the Janna. Against the sort of early weakness of Vayne. Probably not too bad here at all as Let Me might be in a little bit of trouble here against Imp, but MLXG finds his way in. Imp wants to turn this one around, but Arcane smashes there. The heal was used, and MLXG just picks up the kill. Easy as you like, and Let Me just baited that one beautifully. Imp was just too far up the way. I believe he was trying to get the deep freeze on, but there was so much space for MLXG to come in on Nunu, no defensive wards whatsoever, no blue side wards. In fact, there is not an LGD ward on the map. Yeah, there's one RNG ward. Two. That is the only vision. Two. Where's the other one? There's one in the brush. Oh, there's a magical one in the brush down the bottom there. Okay. So, three wards now. Lay with some fantastic vision control this game. Managing to put down the last ward. There's, I guess... You know, you can't really beat 100% better ward coverage. Though. I believe it's infinite better wards. Oh, that's true. That's true. You can't really do many percentages when it comes to dividing by zero. I'm getting a lot of flashbacks to King, Atlas. Oh, dear. Don't do that, Papa Smithy. I'm going to have a very upset color caster on this stream. Thankfully, King, 
no longer really exists. It's Starhorn Royal King now. You're fine. Starhorn Royal King. Yeah. Not just definitely not Starhorn Royal Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that picture. It was fantastic. Flame, he's got a shield. Fan is helping him out here in this lane as Imps made his way back into the bottom side. Does have a pickaxe to his name as well as those boots. Has got to be again trying to get some damage down. Jahu now with the Emperor's Divide in order to create some issues for Godby. Chilling Smite and a Snowball as MLXG just moves his, on, his way past. Successful Nunu gank. Yep. Beautiful stuff. The freeze still relatively good on top, though. You can see with all these minions, the push will eventually come out. Imp has responded by going super aggressive once again. Has Super Mega Death Rocket, but not quite low enough health for Let Me. Yeah, probably wanted to have hit that zap in order to get some extra damage down there. But Let Me, 25 CS to the 26 of Flame. But the fact that the kill has already gone down here means that the Maokai in pretty good stead here. Yeah, equal in CS despite having no help. It's a pure 1v1 matchup. Obviously, a That's lot of point. sustain coming through. The, the same was target nerfed. The sap magic passive now only reaches the same value, I believe, at level 13, but still very, very sustainable. Cloth armor picked up as well. Out of potions, but going to get pressured in, miss some CS, but do just competitively in bot lane is the Malco. And oh, Again, let me... Doing a bit of a drive-by, seeing what he can get away with here as the cloth armor has been picked up. MLXG trying to take his red buff. TBQ mm -hmm. already has his. Might be in trouble. There's a resonating strike. Oh, the flash from MLXG, but TBQ going to flash over as well. The consume to come in. Xiaohu tries to get something done. Oh. The attack over the wall after the ultimate, but TBQ just going to walk out lazily and safeguard his way to his friend. I think he should have probably just saved the ultimate after the death came through. Obviously, what he wanted to do was to push away uh, the away from the Nunu, wasn't able to do that. Suddenly now, there's a window for Godby to go for the 1v1. Yeah, he can try and get some pressure here. Of course, only 7 CS behind. He's not too far off in that regard as well, but has the Ignite, has the Chum the Waters, but not quite going for anything just yet. That's a big minion wave, and Jahu's creating a lot of distance between himself and this Fizz. Yeah, 100 to 0 with no items through a barrier. Not going to happen. Yeah, through a barrier and... That Chalice of Harmony as well. Bit of magic resist onto that item. Tough work. Let me. He's found him one more time as the Flame Chompers are there, but this time, Fan and TBQ making their way around. There's a Ventral Maelstrom. Let me gonna flash away. And I believe he might be safe underneath this turret unless TBQ gets some serious least denied. A Super Mega Death Rocket coming in as well. Twisted Advance. TBQ in a bit of trouble. Doesn't fall down apart from your monitor falling down. And TBQ locks down that kill. If they do pick up the kill. They commit a lot to it, Atlas, but they get the kill. My monitor is alive. <laughs> You're getting so again. excited, Puffer Smithy. Oh, it's fantastic. Impto, managing to bait that one out quite nicely. Everything else was a ruse. God be very, very low. Xiaohu picks up the kill. He is going to trade it. It's a one for one there in the mid lane. But my goodness, that was close. Yeah, the multitude of dots coming through between the Ignite and the Seastone Trident was enough to take them down. That's not actually a pause for my monitor. It's back online. <laughs> Thank goodness. Don't worry. His monitor was all fine. All fine. Exciting stuff. But man, I mean, <laughs> the 1v1 sort of equalized there in the mid lane. Jahu being able to pick up the, I guess, is it a little bit more of a 1v1-1 if you're the first to die or the second to die? Sorry. I mean, if it's not first blood, it's kind of... Not I guess really it doesn't relevant. really matter, does it? No, the experience is matched. Basically, yeah. everything's the same. Maybe in other MOBAs, it'd be different. But in League of Legends, it's fine. Yeah, I think so too. And I think pretty much anywhere, it's if you're getting one for one, it's probably going to be okay. Of course, Jahu may have had a, a separate opportunity in order to keep that wave pushing. You know, maybe that was what it was. But MLXG did come around, and he's going to be able to shove this one into the turret after eating a turret shot himself. TBQ makes his way towards the top side. He gets a pink ward over that wall at the same time. So Imp... Switching this one around, RNG thinking about trying to grab their first dragon. This fan does have a pink ward there, throws over a green into the pit at the same time. Notices the fact that RNG are doing this one, but with consume and smite, you have to think that MLXG probably going to be able to lock this one down relatively easily. Yeah, I mean, with the no no, the consume smite, as you mentioned, it's an easy dragon to pick up. It's an answering dragon, though, because LGD were able to pick the first one up at what, three minutes 50 into the game. Yeah, so very two true. dragons roll down pretty quickly. And speaking of things coming down quickly, Imp as a Jinx with two AD items gets free time with a turret. Yeah, there's a BF sword on top of that pickaxe now, like you mentioned. And Imp gets excited as that turret falls down, and that is going to be the second one here for LGD. The fast push is on, 
for these guys, and we'll see whether they can continue it, because Xiaohu, I mean, he's probably not going to be losing his anytime soon unless the massive four-man dive does come in. And Xiaohu looking good himself, working towards the Athenes. The windows for being assassinated by Fizz, at least in a 1v0 capacity, are starting to close. Morellonomicon is the first pickup for Fizz. Very aggressive choice against double AP that's coming through. Of course, Maokai, just about base values, but still quite a few hills of magic damage. Oh, nice use of the Q and the E in order to get Xiaohu out of the way after that playful trickster was used. I believe the Urchin Strike wasn't even used there in order to try and get him in, just trying to close the distance to get that Charm of the Waters on, but that's an ultimate down. It's excited for this game to move to the team fighting phase. We had a lot of breaks, so a lot of times to think about just how exciting it is to see a vein with all the peel that's afforded, and of course the Blood Boil they'll be riding upon him in the late game. We've just got a lot of damage onto this turret. They want their first turret, but Flame and TBQ, they're going to delay it. Yeah, lots of people with circles around them here in this bottom lane as Flame stacking the Hyper and the Silver Bolts are coming in, but no one actually going to take any dangerous damage. Fan wandering over a ward, but with three people, I don't think RNG are really going to be pushing too far onto this turret. Not for now. Lee Sin's left the lane, but still plenty of wave clean. Of course, this Jana shield can come onto this turret, so plenty of options there. Fizz finally starts the split push that we knew would occur at some point in the game. You would have thought maybe it would have been prompted by a Sheen or a Lich Bane purchase, but just with Merlin Omicron, happy to go and deal with Let Me, and Let Me has just gone back to buy a bit of armor, but certainly no magic just to deal with this Fizz. Yeah, TBQ actually does throw out the Snowball onto, I mean, sorry, the Sonic Wave onto MLXG, but the Flash did come through to save his life there. No one going to be kicked back. MLXG just going to clear out a ward and get out. He's trying to engineer this Fizz versus Maokai matchup that we mentioned during the pregame. Yeah. When the split push gets going, Maokai's going to be deathly terrified of this. Only he's working towards a frozen heart with the build. No sign of the Spectre's cow. 1,200 gold he doesn't have to spend at this present time. He was used to fighting against Narf. Suddenly finds the Fizz. Imp's happy to pick up farm in the mid lane unless RNG can really rotate around their teleport advantage in the top. This is going to be a very successful rotation for LGD. Yeah, and also it's interesting that Let Me hasn't decided to go with anything for laning at all. No catalyst in there, not going towards that Righteous Glory. And that's a lot of extra sustain here for Let Me. And I guess in this situation, wouldn't have really helped him out a lot anyway due to the fact that Godby probably just wants to fight him at all stages. It's one of those situations where you get catalyst if you can get away with it, if you have the right gold value, or if you're not feeling pressure in lane. You're not building the Rod of Ages anymore, so the catalyst first, work out what item you're building, isn't really as much of a factor. Some players will still opt into that Rod of Ages, but certainly not been seen in the LPL so far in the summer split. So you're just happy to go back, buy some cost-effective mana and uh, an armor in this situation, because that was the painful matchup against the Nah, who's just basically free hitting you as a ranged champion most of the laning phase. The Catalyst will still come later. We still expect to see a Righteous Glory, but for now, just unfortunate that there's no magic resist or health being built. Yeah, Fan might be in trouble here as the death sentence was being looked at here by Lei, but doesn't get there. Woosh is able to finish off this outer turret in the bottom side of the map. RNG down a couple thousand gold, but nothing to write home about here as Woosh continues to push and I thought that RNG might be able to get something exciting here. Of course, they are known to do that sometimes, but didn't happen there around that red buff. The rotational play so far hasn't granted them any advantages. They have the teleport advantage by just using it to get farm onto Vayan. I mean, what, what LGD have basically done is that they have Jinx in the mid lane against Azir, who's built an Athene, so of course has no armor. They've got Fizz in the top lane against Maokai, who's built armor against a Fizz as they've, they've swapped very well. It's just a strategic hole, obviously, as they've got Elena with Ignite top against Elena with Teleport. Dragon's down. They've taken the bot turret due to the lack of pressure and the fact that they've had multiple members from the RNG side on bottom side. But now all they really can do is answer the pressure and they're electing to send Wush and Lei against Godvi. In a minute's time, though, this can be exploited by LGD. So these rotations so far seem to be helping LGD. And look at this. Yeah, it looks to be exploited right now as Final Hour does come through. But Sonic Wave doesn't find the mark. Doesn't really matter as MLXG. He's going to die anyway. Flame picks that one up. Nice lantern ride, but... Lay is most definitely dead too. Godvi picks up his first, second kill, sorry, of the game. And although he's fallen down in, behind in farm, this might be the snowball the Fizz needs. Yeah, really nice proactive moves paid from LGD and good timing as well. If they'd waited another 30 seconds, they might have paid for that rotation with a dragon, but it's two free kills. It gets Fizz going and what will be a split push centric Fizz build as far as we can tell. 
and they should be freshly shopped in time for this dragon. Yeah, and this outer turret didn't even fall down either as Imp was able to clear out all the minions there. And Infinity Edge now on top of the Avarice Blade here for the Jinx. Now with a CS advantage considering the fact that Woosh has fallen down and 0-1-0 zero, zero so far for the Vayne. Of course, it isn't really the time where a Vayne's going to be strong, but it's not good news irrespective. It's not really a big factor, as you mentioned. It's still very, very early into this game. They still have a team comp that is all about protecting the Vayne. The Vayne's free farm, so she's done at least half her job in that particular Ooh. regard. God, we might be in trouble. There's the death sense as well. Woosh looking for a possible condemn. But God be able to create a lot of distance. Nice Howling Gale. And there's the Monsoon to get rid of the RNG members. Imp hanging around here as well as Yahoo follows in on that Q. Nice flayback. God be there searching for him. But MLXG just going to get destroyed. LGD managing to turn this one around. Another nice death sentence. But the flash out there from Fan. TBQ tries to get in. Super Mega Death Rock are going to spell the end of late. God be finds his way over the wall. There's the Blade of the Rune King. No whoosh. Picks up a kill for himself. Imp flashes over the wall. LGD picking up all the kills. That's the ace. And LGD, they're going to transition into a dragon. And that was so beautifully baited and played out over an extended series of events. A really nice team fight there. MLX, she just completely disregarding Fizz's damage. He'd just gone back, freshly shopped. Got boots and a needlessly large rod. So exploded him. And then the Fizz mechanics to on the downside of the... Uh, playful on the trickster side of things flash over the wall coming through from the emperor's divide and explode the azir godvi's good at fizz and he's putting it to good use and the lane swapping and and play that lgd have put forward has been a level above their strategy in the first three games of the lpl yeah i actually had no idea how godvi had managed to get over that emperor's divide and then all of a sudden he was way in amongst everything and then Woosh, I mean, credit to him, managed to pick up the kill. But that's a 4-2-2 two two Fizz now. Almost with the Zonya's Hourglass completed. Going to have those Boots of Lucidity very soon. And that's 40% CDR plus an ability to go untargetable on top of the fact that you have Playful Trickster. Man, this is Fizz is going to be so frustrating for RNG to deal and with. And that's why you just keep up the split push. And this is so much more straightforward for LG to execute. They looked all at C trying to execute the Oriana cannon wombo combos with Sejuani in the previous game. Imp's going in, though. Yeah, Xiaohu looking for something. There's the Emperor's Divide. Imp, though, gets excited. Only one Sun Turret hit. And he is, own, is going to be able to lock down that kill. Flame even picking up an assist. I think Xiao was just completely undone by the Yomu's Ghostblade second. We're finally going to see a replay of this fight. This is after MLXG had already fallen down. The re-engage looks really possible when Lei goes down, but the flash. Of course, Playful Trickster can't go over that terrain, but the flash as a reposition does work. The EQ hits from Lee Sin onto the veins, so he goes down. Further damage comes down the back line. Really nice team fight coming through for LGD. Yeah, LGD just playing it out really beautifully. And you did mention the ghost blade. We didn't see it in the replay, but that is most definitely one of those sitting in the inventory of Imp. And I've never seen it before, but right then, Jahu was caught out. I mean, the extra movement speed's a factor. Also, it makes the execution damage on your ultimate that much more relevant. No arm has been built up by Jahu. Now just goes back and buys a cloth armor. The ult is doing huge damage, even in close range, in terms of the missing health. It's a different build. I kind of wondered if it would ever come through. TBQ's caught. Yeah, MLXG, though, only able to throw out a snowball to answer the Ooh. death sentence. So and not really finding too much. I mean, the answer is the question, though. Who's going to answer this fizz? Well, it seems like no one at this stage. I think that the members of RNG are sort of arguing in amongst one another, saying, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I mean, Someone Malachi, else do it. Malachi probably has to do it. Now has Kalos for a bit of health, but certainly not on the right spot. Oh, Imp in a whole lot of trouble, though. Woosh picks up the kill here. Is MLXG decent ultimate. His fan taking a lot of damage. Another snowball to come down. Chum the Water's going to do a bit of damage to the Nunu, but it's not an optimal target. LGD dropping the ball just a bit as they pick up a whole bunch of things. RNG, can they get anything as far as an objective from this? The bottom lane's dead from LGD. Yeah, the bottom lane's dead. They're going to push onto the mid lane. Is there any wave clear left from LGD? It's a Fizz comp, so honestly, the answer is no. They need a minion wave to make this possible. No, the, the turret's so low. They will definitely get it. Flame backs away. No rage bar. Has teleport. He's going to back. Oh, TBQ. Nice use of the safeguard in order to get his way around, but MLXG flashes forward with the... The Snowball condemn into the wall, though Xiaohu picks it up with an attack command. 
And RNG, they're getting some picks around this map, trying to close this gold gap. The Azir set coming through from Jahu was wonderful. Oh, There's yeah. a reason that he gets so much respect on this champion. Comes with the picks and bans. No obvious Cassiopeia counter pick. Godvi goes with the Fizz and it's been mostly successful, but that's well, honestly a lot of Fizz getting ahead has been through the lane source rather than necessarily the 1v1 lane matchup. Yeah, Jahu able to create some opportunities here for himself. Still has CS advantage. Zonya's Hourglass is completed though from Godby. Doesn't quite have the boots of lucidity for the 100% or for. 40% CDR. I was going to say 100% CDR, but 100% of the possible CDR that you can get on a champion. Godby is able to clear out this minion wave on the top side. And look, I mean, RNG haven't really been caught by this split push that they haven't shown us an answer for it yet either. I mean, LG's answer to what is a very, very strong teamfight comp is just split push all day. Nara is obviously very comfortable in a split pushing role. We've already established that multiple members, at least two, will be required to deal with Godvi now that he has the Zonyas completed and the CDR boots that you were mentioning for the 40% CDR. So multiple types of untargeted ability oh, yeah. is, uh, makes him a very, very slippery character. Finally actually returning to mid as Dragon's about to spawn. It feels like LGD have a lot of options. 5v5 fighting is still a possibility for them. But honestly, a 5v5 is the only way for RNG to get back into this game. Just keep on the split push. Yeah, now that Wuxian does have that QSS completed, can potentially drop the fish if it does come down. Does that mean Wush might be able to get into the split push scenario against the Fizz? Or is he just too tricky? Is there too many abilities that he can do to kill this vein. I think in a pure 1v1 scenario, no. And it looks like he won't be able to fit in a Banshee Veil. It'll be a little bit more useful because he's still going to get so much damage down. Some of the tankier members can disregard Fizz damage. It's not so much miss the ultimate QW death like they used to be in yep. previous iterations now that a lot of the damage is around the amplica amplification on the Fizz. But still the base stats from Vayne are too low, I think. There's still the potential with a sick outplay, but it'll be very, very difficult and risky to engineer such a split push. Yeah, MLXG looking to try and get something happening here. The Nunu bot just wandering around, trudging around the jungle. Now, is warded up here just a little bit. Boomerang going to find him. Flame still just being annoying himself, but MLXG is going to be able to get that Grump. TBQ clearing out some minions. So Sun Turret still up there helping out Jahu. Two, one, dragon spawns. RNG's comp much stronger when they're being aggressed on than when they're going aggressive, but looks like they've got no option. If they want to contest for this third dragon, they'll have to go in aggressively. Yeah, LGD again, not exactly making a solid decision here as RNG are going to pick up the aggro from this dragon. It hasn't decided to reset just yet, but oh my goodness, MLXG another time is able to steal away that dragon. Jahu escaping as well using that cute little QE combo. After the Sand Soldiers come out and RNG, they'll just take the fourth dragon and get out of there. One of the easiest ways for RNG to win fights is to get the supremacy over dragon, get towards that fifth, force LGD to fight on their terms, because they kite back well. Oh my goodness, TBQ just goes on a merry ride here. Wushin picks up the killers. The ultimate does come down from MLXG. Decent monsoon from Fan, but looks like RNG have managed to get the pick that they were looking for. What will they turn it into? The Dragon's down. Baron looks risky, even with Smite down. And their Siege is pretty poor. So can they get enough poke damage to actually take down a turret? We'll see what they can do. Zap was used just to try and do a little bit of extra damage to a single minion. Eye of the Storm is used to help with this turret, but Chum the Waters... A little bit short on Godby's fingers there, so Flame no fight going to happen. Flame needs to open up enough space for the order attacks to come out from Imp. He's the only person with AoE wave there. He doesn't do it. Inner turret's going to fall down. Death Sentence on a flame, but he's about to go into Mega Nar. Super Mega Death Rocket comes in. MLXG very low. Oh. Look at the five-man Nar from Flame. No one's dead just yet, but Imp now able to get excited. Godby picks up the first kill. Imp gets Death Sentence, but that should have gone the other way around there as LGD clean up. Whoosh got the heck out, but LGD, they're going to be able to pick up a Baron. And there's a reason why we were talking about Flame's Nar. Sometimes he makes it all happen at the same time. Five-man Nar. Very rarely seen. One's LGD, a super hard fight to execute. 4v5. That was so beautiful. Able to get the wall up onto three members there as well. And once that happens, that's the top laner alone securing the team fight. There was 
LGD, no other members need to do anything. Let's see it again. Just watch this replay. Remember, there is no TBQ during this fight. Everyone tries to peel for Woosh, and thus everyone gets gnawed into the wall. You can see the shenanigans afterwards. Imp actually needs a Mikhail's to stay healthy, but keeps fighting in just minigun range. What a play by Flame. That was unbelievable. Also did so much damage. You've mentioned the sort of, I guess, base damages of the Wallop and the Nah, but we saw it in full effect there. MLXG got torn apart by all of those abilities. And man, LGD now with the Baron in their back pocket, they'll be able to get the push on him with a Jinx. Pushing turrets is pretty easy. I mean, it's, it's, it goes without being said that you shouldn't line up against a NAR ultimate, but with this team comp against a Jinx, it's all about the first kill coming through, and then the Jinx will just hit all the... the get the, get excited, get in range yeah. for all that AoE damage. And whether it's the NAR ultimate or Fizz bursting someone down, it's all about the tanks getting tanky enough and soaky enough damage to actually stay alive. Because if the first kill comes through, LGD have shown very clearly that the second to fifth come fast afterwards. They most certainly do. Imp going to get excited after taking down that sun turret. Nice little zap onto MLXG. But this inner turret, it is not long for the world either. And can LGD actually break the base off this at the same time? There's a whole lot of minions. A siege minion there as well. Xiaohu trying to clear out the wave. As Megana is going to come in for Flame, but may not find too much off that one. Actually, the Immortal Flame here this game, 4-0-8. and eight. He's had a great game. And no Sunfire Cape this time, going for the team fight now. Absolutely. The build much more on point this game. Had the randoms for team fighting very early. Hex trigger for a little bit of offensive choice, but definitely not spending three, three and a half thousand gold on either Frozen Mallet or the Black Cleaver. Yeah, exactly. Not even picking up that Sunfire Cape, which was an interesting choice his last game as Imp is going to pop back into that minigun. They're going to take another inner turret. They've only taken one inner, of course. The sun turrets aren't going to count on that front. Evened out the turrets, but 8,000 gold now the lead here for LGD. This is a much better game, a much better performance, and Godby has been brilliant on this. Fizz, able to really get things going towards that mid game. That first team fight, you have to think, probably helped snowball LGD into this position from the get-go. They really need Maokai to teleport in early. If he comes in late, one kill comes through, it doesn't matter if Maokai's in a flank position. The first kill to the second to the third will make it super hard for a fight, but we're seeing a fight right now. Yeah, MLXG does get broken out of his ultimate very quickly. TBQ not too bad on the tankiness front here as Godvi trying to get some work done. There's a playful trickster, so much AoE damage. Nice Zonya's there from the Fizzers. Imp is starting to clean this one up. Xiaohu left alive. Imp just crits him as an afterthought. A triple kill comes through for the AD carry. Godvi picks up a double. And that was just messy but beautiful. And LGD have finally found the tonic for their wounds in the first three games. The split push they engineered. God V in the top lane against Maokai. We already noted that Fizz vs. Maokai was a very good matchup. They navigated around the early magic resist and armor purchases of Maokai and Azir really successfully. And they'll take the win. Yep, 4-0 and 13 flame ends it as well. A fantastic performance for the NAR player and just gnarring people into the wall as the Nexus falls down 20 to 7. LGD, their first victory of the summer split of the LPL and it was in convincing fashion towards the end there. They were never behind that game. And maybe Flame's first highlight reel worthy clip on oh his LGD goodness. tenure, but what a highlight reel. Five man now that won them the game, free hitting Jinx behind him, picking up all their kills. LGD, it took them four games, and when they finally did it, it was back to their old form. Okay, they still don't have PYL, but getting their first point on the board is going to be so much confidence coming into week two of the LPL. Yeah, they're going to be feeling so much better about themselves, and man, you have to give it to Flame. That was such a beautiful NAR ultimate. And I mean, I haven't, I mean, you've already spoken about it, but I think it deserves a double mention because, man, that was easily the highlight of that whole series thus far. And Woosh, he tried out the Vayne yet again, not quite so successful. So Vayne still only with one victory thus far in the LPL for the summer. So the scouting book for LGD, for the teams that are going to face them before PYL. And again, we don't know if PYL is going to be back next week, a few yep. weeks' time. We don't have that information. 
if they can get away with the split push, they finally got Fizz into off lanes. They look so much more strong than when they were playing their playoff style, which was around TBQ playing the Cinderhawk jungle and the lane swap. Cinderhawk jungle, lane swaps without PYL have been a disaster. Oh, yeah. They're going to look more for those selfish choices like the Fizz with the low wave clear. If you answer that with the Sivir, you've got a lot more options to get back in the game, of course, because then you have so many wave clear options. When you go for these hyper carry, vein focus comps, you open up windows for LG to take advantage of you with these assassins, and the assassins ran wild, ran wild, and they deserve their win. So LGD, try and keep them towards their old style. Keep them away from the assassins, because the assassin play is all that's keeping them together, creaking through this first week of the LPL. Yeah, Govi definitely playing well on those assassins. But ladies and gentlemen, we still have one more series to go this evening. EDG going to be taking on Vici Gaming after this short break.